Thank you very much for joining me. I'm meteorologist Brian Shields. Thank you for being part of this weather community. I want to get a look at the water temperatures. There's been some cooling, but what that means for the rest of the hurricane season and the biggest ingredient I'm watching out for for the rest of the hurricane season. Let's start with kind of what we've got going on right now. We've had this tropical wave move by the Caribbean, some areas of rainstorms, and a couple more areas, one off the coast of Africa, another one here. None of these are organized. That is, that is some good news. Uh, some of us will get some rain out of this as we go throughout the week ahead. I want to track that, but not seeing right now signs of development into anything into a tropical storm or a hurricane. Now, some of these bigger areas of rain near Panama, Costa Rica, near Nicaragua, I'm going to monitor that because we're going to get a little surge of moisture in here. Spotty showers anywhere from uh, Haiti, the Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, uh, back near Antigua and Barbuda and Anguilla, and watching some of the rain there near Guyana and Suriname. Suriname, we've had some flooding. Guyana, we've had some flooding in some of this whole march its way toward a Trinidad as we go through the day. But some spotty showers possible as well. Cayman Islands and Jamaica on the back side of this uh, tropical wave. Scattered showers possible. Parts of Cuba, Turks and Caicos, and again across Hispaniola, Puerto Rico, U.S. British Virgin Islands. We're going to stay unsettled today. It's not a guarantee we get some rain, but over towards St. Martin, St. Bart, St. Bastatia, St. Kitts and Nevis could see a few of those uh, showers. Now, I'll get into this, the southeastern Caribbean in a moment with some of the extra rain moving in. Let me set the stage though for what's going on now and what I'm watching for the hurricane season. Now we've had a lot of dust around so we've been seeing some of the dust here. Now not all of this is dust. You see it by the Great Lakes. Sometimes this picks up on cooler water. Sometimes this picks up on uh, some dry air. But this here in the Caribbean, that is some of the uh, dust. And in, in this area of dry air, some of this has been some dust. And that did actually cool down the water temperatures. A couple things cooled down the water. One, the dust, as I was just mentioning. You see this blue shading getting out into the Atlantic right there? This is the seven day change. And where you see the blue, that means those temperatures in the water have gone down some. So so we see that as well as you get back toward the Bay of Campeche and the Western Gulf. This here, though, is mainly because of Barrel and even Alberto. And Barrel did help uh, knock down some of the temperatures in some of the uh, water as you get back through parts of the Caribbean. So the temperatures have gone down some because of the dust. The dust acts like a shield. You don't get as much of the, uh, the radiation coming in from the sun and because we had a couple named storms out there. So the temps down a little bit. There has been some cooling, but look where we stand. Those numbers, uh, look at the Bahamas for example. 30 degrees Celsius. That's 86 degrees Fahrenheit. That is clearly uh, very warm. Now, obviously, even with some cooling, temperatures are going to be warm enough in the water for development, but they're still well above average as a whole. Yes, we've had some cooling, but we started from way up here. This winter, the water temperatures didn't drop off a whole lot, so there's been a little bit of cooling over the last seven days, but it's not going to make a big difference with the potential of a, a storm, with the, uh, the possibility of storms developing down the road. Now, this is the biggest key. If you join me during the winter, um, this is what I was talking about. It's the ocean heat content. Now, you see these brighter colors, Gulf of Mexico, back through the Caribbean and parts of the Atlantic. Even though we've had some cooling, we see these brighter colors. Well, what is this? That's not just warm water. That is warm water, deep warm water. So as a hurricane goes over it or a tropical storm, it could churn up just more warm water. So this is not just warm water, but deep warm water in here. And in these pockets, we could get rapid intensification. If we get a tropical storm moving over one of these areas, we could see something uh, developing very quickly or rapidly intensifying into a major hurricane and we saw parts of that with a uh, barrel even as it rolled into parts of the uh, Gulf of Mexico after it weakened it was able to strengthen before moving in again toward Texas so it's really those warm pockets in the ocean that are a big concern so yes a little bit of cooling but the ocean is still very warm and watching out for the ocean uh, heat content which is unusually high it's a little bit more like September and here we are in mid-July now for today you see some of the scattered showers and storms around I mentioned Nicaragua let me flip over into tomorrow uh, this is by uh, 4 o'clock tomorrow. Parts of Central America still watching this rain. Spotty showers and storms. Haiti and the DR. Look at Trinidad toward Guyana and Suriname. Uh, southeastern sections of Venezuela. We're going to see that rain picking up. This is by the time we work our way into Tuesday afternoon. So may get a day where we're dry. May get some rain another day and then uh, may get another dry day and then followed by more rain. You see here on Wednesday, there's that little surge of moisture moving into the eastern Caribbean by the time we work our way into the uh, middle of the week. 
I mentioned two more tropical waves out there, which is common. Those are going to be marching in. Here's one of them. So you see by Wednesday, the rain chance will be getting even higher for some of us, and I'll be fine tuning that the next few days. As far as the seas go, nothing crazy in most locations, which is good. Here's meters, here's feet over here. Seeing things a little bit choppy here over toward parts of the uh, Southern Caribbean. That's typical for this time of year based on the overall weather pattern. Things kind of build up right here. But you see over toward the Bahamas and the Gulf of Mexico, this is working our way into uh, tomorrow. And then this here is Tuesday. Nothing uh, super crazy. Just a bit of that chop as we work our way back through the Caribbean. Now this here, spotty showers and storms around Cuba, Haiti, Dominican Republic, uh, even parts of Jamaica. You see some of the brighter colors showing up, which means over the next few days, next three days, if you do get a shower or storm, we could get an inch or two of rain or anywhere from 50 to about 75 millimeters of some rain. Here's eastern Cuba, uh, passing shower possible, Cayman Islands and Jamaica. There's going to be some thunderstorms. Keep me posted in Jamaica, Haiti and the Dominican Republic. We'll see some downpours, isolated areas of flooding, passing showers and storms possible. Puerto Rico, U.S. British Virgin Islands over towards St. Martin, Antigua and Barbuda. Let me know if you do get any as we go over the next few days. Now, as we work our way from Dominique, south. Highest chance of rain will be toward Trinidad and uh, Tobago the next few days. Barbados, St. Lucia, passing shower. Here's Guyana and Suriname though. This is a problem. We're already underwater in some spots and you see those brighter colors, the white colors, even some of the black getting in there. That's 100 millimeters to 150 millimeters of rain or four to six inches of rain. That is going to lead to more flooding. I do this channel for safety. So again, thank you for getting the word out. Guyana and Suriname, we're going to see some additional areas of heavier rain. I've been going through the comments from yesterday and we've had that uh, flooding in spots, especially over toward uh, Suriname. Now, as we get back here, is this little pocket I'm concerned about near Panama, Costa Rica, and uh, Nicaragua, where we could see some higher totals, scattered showers and storms in Belize and Honduras. We get back through Mexico, you see uh, across uh, western sections that higher chance of getting some of that rain. Now, let me jump over here, kind of on the northern end of everything. Here's Newfoundland over toward uh, parts of Nova Scotia. This is back toward New England and the Mid-Atlantic. No organized uh, tropical systems. Uh, as we work our way toward uh, the eastern seaboard. Uh, this is Monday. See some showers offshore. It could get clipped by a few showers in Newfoundland. And then we'll keep an eye on a couple showers and storms working through uh, Quebec as we get into Monday into Tuesday. Spotty shower storm possible over toward uh, Prince Edward Island. So Jamaica for us, 40 to 50% chance of some scattered showers and storms, about a 40% chance across the Cayman Islands. Rain chance today in Trinidad and Tobago, 30%. But by tomorrow, up to a 50%. We're going to see 50 percent chance. We'll see the rain chance getting a little higher. Barbados, it'll be an active uh, week ahead. Scattered showers and storms. St. Lucia, 30 to 40 percent chance. The next couple days in Grenada, 30 percent chance. Same thing, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Rain chance about 30 percent the next two days in Martinique. Swing back toward Dominica. Rain chance tomorrow will be at 40%. Guadalupe, 30 to 40% over the next three days, and an even 30% of that passing shower chance in Tegan and Barbuda. We've got some action around even uh, this morning. St. Kitts, Nevis, and Montserrat, 20 to 30% chance, 20 to 30% chance, Anguilla and St. Bart's. And seeing some isolated showers, even a thunderstorm possible, St. Martin, Saba, over towards Stacia. Rain chance about 50% in Puerto Rico today, 30% chance tomorrow, 40% chance by the time we get into a Tuesday, uh, 30 to 40% chance uh, U.S. and British Virgin Islands watching over towards St. Croix with a couple showers. Bahamas, 30 to 40% chance and about a 20 to 30% chance. There'll be a few nearby the Turks and Caicos. Dominican Republic watching out for some heavier storms in some locations today. And we could even get some heavier storms uh, the next couple of days in parts of Haiti favoring uh, southern sections. Belize, our rain chance holding at about 40%. Uh, Aruba, Curacao, Bonaire still generally on the dry side. We've had a couple showers every now and then, but, but not a lot. That rain chance is low. I mentioned that flood threat for Guyana and Suriname. The next three days just tacking on to some of those rain totals. Rain chance about 30% in Cuba today, a 40% chance tomorrow and Tuesday. 40 to 50% chance the next couple days in Costa Rica and Panama, a little bit higher by Tuesday, but favoring the Caribbean side, that's where we could see some of that flooding. Nicaragua, same thing, watching that cluster of some rain and storms nearby, and some of that will clip us over toward Honduras. Rain chance about 30% today in Guatemala and El Salvador, back up to a 50% chance tomorrow, and kind of active across uh, Mexico City and uh, uh, surrounding areas. Yucatan Peninsula, about a 40 to 50% chance. Rain chance Colombia, uh, 
uh, closer to the uh, Caribbean stays kind of small, some isolated showers, 30% chance northern Venezuela, and looking at a 30% chance today in Bermuda, mainly dry tomorrow and uh, Tuesday. So watching the warm water pockets. Yes, there's been some cooling, but the water temperatures are warm in the ocean heat content. Those warm water pockets, that's the biggest concern to watch through the hurricane season, but it's nice now to be able to take a breath. No signs of development in the short term. We have some dust and dry air out there. It will get more active later this month. Of course it will as we get toward later this month and especially August. That's when the hurricane season really ramps up. So I'll keep you posted on everything. Thank you for being part of this channel. Have a good and safe rest of your day.